One six nine. Say it means we got shots fired. Four fifteen A S F. All right, welcome back to the Ingram Angle here from Las Vegas. We're almost now four months after that deadly mass shooting, the worst in American history. Why do we still have so many unanswered questions? Let's turn to a couple of experts to break it all down. Former LAPD detective Mark Furman, who became a household name, of course, during the O.J. Simpson trial, and Randy Sutton, a former lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Great to see both of you. Uh, Mark, let's start with you. Uh, it is four months almost since the shooting. And we're now only hearing that they might be charging another individual after we've heard almost nothing <clears throat> from the Las Vegas Police Department and after the press had to press for a lot of these documents to be released. What's going on here? Well, Laura, let's, let's pause for a second and, and understand that we had 58 homicides, that's 58 individual homicide investigations and hundreds of people that were wounded and that had to be documented and handled by the detectives. We haven't heard from one detective yet in this, which is unfortunate. But let's look at some <clears throat> of the things that had to be processed, and one is DNA. If there was DNA on anything that Paddock handled that was in that room, they probably pursued that. And it is probably his girlfriend that they're actually targeting. But I don't think that's gonna solve anything in this case as far as why, the motive, or really how Paddock actually pulled this off. Randy, uh, you were uh, you know, veteran of the Las Vegas Police Department, and I have a couple friends that you probably know who are homicide detectives there, just retired a couple of years ago. Uh, and it's a tight-knit group at the Las Vegas Police. Uh, they deal with a lot every day, but this was so horrific on every level. And what happens when we don't have regular updates or, or even press you know, briefings, I think, in a case like this, is that people start saying, well, what's really going on? Well, why aren't we seeing, right. where's the video of, of Stephen Paddock checking into the hotel? I've been asking this question, my, my producers like laugh at me because I ask the question like every day. Where's the video of Stephen Paddock checking into the hotel? Nobody ever gives me an answer. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot of going, there's a lot going on here. Uh, and, and one of the things that you've probably heard and, and has is, is been uh, inexplicable to me is that when when Metro took on this investigation uh, and the the scope of it of course is huge uh, for some reason a decision was made to relieve the homicide unit of this investigation and give it to a, a rather innocuous unit that that handles um, uh, officer involved shootings so that's one of the that's one of the major questions that that I have had and you know here's the thing the, the initial law enforcement response was amazing uh, the courage that these officers showed uh, and and the uh, dedication that they showed was absolutely uh, uh, stunning and and but then you have this this media blackout as you have termed it and and it's um, it, it's very difficult to understand. It's, it's a little inexplicable to me how the, the sheriff has not been keeping the public did they screw abreast up? of okay, this situation. I know you're not going to say this, but Randy, did they screw up? And, and, or are they worried that Vegas, I mean, it's a place that survives on tourism. People have to feel right. safe. They have to feel like when they check into a hotel, there's not a guy checking 10 bags with thousands of rounds of ammunition who's going to be in the next hotel room. And like I, I get, I get these casinos. They want to be thriving and hiring people. I get it, but I, I find this to be really odd and frankly infuriating I, that we got the big brush off from the from the police today. We're big supporters of the police. We got a big brush off. No, we're going to talk about. What do you mean you're going to talk about it? We're not asking you to compromise the investigation. Why, why, why do we know so little about his movements inside that hotel? And no one ever went inside the hotel with him? No one? No one came in and out? No maids? They never, you know, we never, where's that security guard? He was on Ellen, for goodness sakes. He did one appearance on Ellen because she has some deal with the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Well, there's no doubt. Well, first of all, did the police screw up in this? No, they didn't. They've handled this investigation um, at, at the initial outset w with with the professionalism that w one would expect. However, you know, when when you talk about giving the responsibility of this investigation to the proper authorities, well, that would be the homicide unit. That's right, what they but the, do. Those guys are they great. I know those guys. 
They're great right. guys. So, I got to so, get firm. I got to so get firm in on this, Mark. Mark, okay. I, I don't. You know, I'm a big supporter of the police. Everyone knows that. But this was. 50, we have 58 Americans dead. We had, you know, 498 injured, and we're we're monkeying around with. Oh, we're not going to release this search warrant. We're not going to release that search warrant. We apparently we have one woman who got paid money while, while this thing was happening, why he wired her money. She deleted her Facebook account, Mark, before his name was even released to the public. She's deleting Facebook accounts. That is odd. Well, look, Laura, Randy is absolutely correct. I think it's a slap in the face of the homicide detectives that do this for a living and officer-involved shooting team. They also deal with deaths, but it's usually involved with officers. And I'm sure that the thought process was that they handle a lot of uh, ballistics and a lot of tracking the path of bullets, and they'd be better handled or better, uh, I guess, uh, informed to handle this since the shooter is dead. That being said, the one thing I didn't like about this investigation is you had too many heavies, too many chiefs, too many from the white, the, the big tower talking in these press conferences instead of the people that actually do this for a living. I think that's one of the things that became a mistake, that now we don't have that information. We also have civil litigation. We have hundreds of civil lawsuits that are undoubtedly they're oh, yeah. looking at in the city of the city of Las Vegas, Mandalay Bay, the police department, even though I believe just like Randy, the police department did nothing because they they had such a small window to actually act. And I think they did it, as he's put, bravely and heroically, and they actually closed as fast as they could with the suspect. But Mandalay Bay and Las Vegas and an elected official that's handling the investigation, a sheriff. I think there's a lot of unsaid politics going on here. That Bingo. I, Follow I the believe, money. I believe well, they're just there's, slowing it down. <laughs> Follow the money. There, there's uh, there's no ahead, doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind that that the Mandalay Bay is is one controlling the um, information the, flow. Uh, well, especially when it comes to their employee uh, Campos. I mean, he disappeared Absolutely. after appearing on Ellen. That was <laughs> that was very contrived. He's on Ellen. And, and, I mean, I mean. Yeah.